Hey everyone. I hope everyone's having a good time uh, in the metaverse. Uh, I am Y Chang. I do scripts, voices, and songs. I've worked with companies like Funimation and the Media Blasters. You may have seen me on NBC or The Onion, but we're not here to talk about me today. We're here to talk with the Living Tombstone. Um, hey, and I guess hello. you guys can introduce yourselves. Hey, hi. hi. It's nice to see you and you. Yeah. <laughs> we are we're in different boxes, but we're not we're not we're not <laughs> in different boxes. Yes. No, we're in a box uh, together. Um, yes. No, but also the chat. Good to see everyone in the chat in the stream. Good to see yeah. you. Guys. Yeah. Hey everybody. Hi. Uh yeah. So why don't we start off with some introductions? I told the chat who I am, but who are you guys in case yeah. people don't already know? Yeah. So we're the living tombstone. I, um this is Yoav, and I am Sam, and together we're the band. Yeah. Um, we we met and started working together three, four years ago. So like that. That. We, we started three years ago because we met together at the karaoke party because voice actor friends. Who yeah, yeah. We out. didn't. We met together at a karaoke party, yeah. Um, yeah. which is very on brand for both of us. I feel. Yeah. Um, and uh, Yoav is the person that a lot of longtime fans of the Living Tombstone may recognize from back in the uh, the early convention DJing days and whatnot. The different fandoms like the Brony Times and everything. Oh, the Brony uh, Times. The Brony Times. So the, well, basically, it's... Um, uh, the Horse Times. Uh, it was a big chunk of my uh, the start of my channel and everything. I mean, so it was created nine years ago, and the entire purpose was basically to explore this different, like, fandoms and everything on the internet. I mean, I was already into video games, so joining the internet wasn't that far off from my head, basically. I mean, same goes to a lot of people anyway. So, yeah. Basically... Crazy things, because it's like an internet band, but it's always been an internet band because I was already on the internet. For right. The very yeah. Beginning. Yeah. This is this is very much an act that is born and raised in the internet. And hi. Well, if you don't if you don't know us, because we're <laughs> so very much an internet thing, yeah. this, this is us. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe just two of us, but if you haven't checked out our channel before, it's basically it's a it's a very it's a music video oriented thing. Yeah. It takes a lot of people. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's basically as we're the we're the main two, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's as far as introduction goes, I guess. You guys are the face of the enterprise. Basically. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Right. Yeah. And I hear you on like the whole being on the internet and being into video games things. I actually I feel like the first time that I met you off in person was when Splatoon just came out, and so that. Oh was... yeah, and we played it. Oh my god! And we yeah. you had a game that was worth playing. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> right. Oh. No, because the Wii U, but um, that's a small tangent. But the Wii U was an amazing console. But it took it, every time a good game came out, you just finished it, and then you just waited for the next good game to come out. Yeah, that's yeah. Wii U. But anyway, sorry. No, uh, no, no. It was the Wii U was a little uh, engine that could, and then it couldn't. But it's I have to say it's been really interesting knowing you as someone you know who was doing songs about Splatoon and you know uh, fan songs about like Five Nights. Freddy's and other like other like pop culture um, gems, and you know, fast forward to now, it's been so interesting to see this new album Zero One, and it's so oh, yeah. different from your past stuff. And I guess one of the things that I wanted to ask you next was just like what we can expect and what this whole thing is. Okay, so um, I guess this is kind of a, a good segue of from like you know Splatoon and like the gaming related content. Um, you know, so much of the history of the act has been about like taking a fandom that like we're a part of and that like is content that we really love and lore that we really love and characters and a whole world that we're invested in. And, and part of the mission of the album was to see what we could do with kind of a world of our own. And so Zero One, I hesitate to call it a concept album because the songs aren't like concept story songs. No, it, but they represent, a, they tether around a specific point throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And, and people already got it. And and we're, you know, our goal has been to build this sort of a, a world and a lore that belongs to TLT. Mm -hmm. um, and Zero One is not only the name of the album, but it's the name of one of five characters that we've created. Yes. Which yeah. are sort of the fictional band of the Living Tombstone. Um, and zero one being the first one, and uh, an appropriate name for for them. Um, and uh, one of the things that we're going to do, in addition to obviously releasing the album and having very visual videos that 
uh, start to get more into the characters of the band, which we'll see um, in the Chosen video, which actually comes out right after this panel. Um, uh, we're we're going to start having little video introductions to each of those five. Um, and in fact, you know, we have a we have a yes. video clip uh, today that will uh, come out in a week on our channel. But we figured we would play it early for you here, anyone watching, mm -hmm. so that you can uh, meet the character of Zero yeah. One. You said so, it was just going to be a Q and A. Nope, you're wrong. No, we're have we've stuff also to show got you. content. Yeah, that's <laughs> actual content. So this is. Uh, this is an introduction to the character of Zero One. Let's let's play that. Yeah. Introducing Zero One. Zero One is one of the Tombstones, the characters that compose the band of the Living Tombstone. But what makes Zero One unique? Zero One is inspired by the birth of the digital age in the 1970s and draws its name from the invention of binary code. Like all Tombstones, Zero One is an ageless entity that has bonded with a series of extraordinary humans throughout history. Zero One is a patron Tombstone of those who seek a greater understanding of the world, from all the way back to Pythagoras to individuals like Galileo, Leibniz, or Einstein. It is this keen sense of mathematics, codes, and formulas that connects Zero One to people who turn formulas into art. Composers! In The Living Tombstone, Zero One is a music producer and vocalist. Zero One's personality is very playful, and it functions as a ringleader to The Living Tombstone. Zero One exudes a childlike curiosity and is very energetic and positive, though prone to loneliness when nobody is around. But not to worry, you can keep Zero One and all his friends company. This September, stream Zero One by the Living Tombstone and meet Zero One. So, th first of all, yeah. that, there's that. Um, what do you think, Yang? What do you think, Yangi? I think, I think it's so adorable. What a treat. I, I love that you have that little scope motif, not just on uh, them, but also on the rest of the band. It very much is a throwback to your own logo for the Living Tombstone. Oh, very much. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think this weirdly ties back to the intro, uh, which, like, yeah, we took our time introducing ourselves, but that's kind of the point. It's kind of hard to define what we are to the Living Tombstone. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, like, we are the Living Tombstone, but... Yeah. To, to a degree, it's almost more accurate to call us like the writer creators of the Living Tombstone mm -hmm. in that, you know, where we're going with this really is like creating our own musical world that people can explore and that we're kind of just the the writers for. Right. No, because right. the idea behind all of it is that we're just, we like to create entertainment, I think, as a whole, because we just, we, we already come from a background of creating things that are just beyond just music. Yeah, whether it's video games or shows or anything like that. And that's why I think, like, um, it's important to, um, you know, as musicians, we, we just want to just, you know, do things that are just more than beyond music. Like, let's say musicals almost, basically. Yeah, you know, I, th I think there it's very limiting to almost call, like, The Living Tombstone just, like, a music act. It's almost more like, I sometimes describe us as, like, a music video act because yeah, there's yeah, something... Yeah visual about everything we do we are very rarely doing something that's like it's just a song and that's all it is mm -hmm. right i was gonna say um i remember earlier you sam you said you hesitated to call it uh, to call zero one uh a concept album but i feel like because you are building a whole universe you are very much like Bublil and Schoenberg to to you know throw out a really <laughs> weird musical theater reference you're making like kind of Les Mis but instead of on stage it exists out there on the internet and there's something yeah. really really cool about that and it's you know to that end like it's kind of it's decentralized basically you know there isn't this sort of set linear here's the story of the living tombstone so that's why we're more like in the in the headspace of creating characters and worlds. Mm -hmm. Because also, you know, when you look back at like some of the stuff for the band that has done so well, like stuff about like Five Nights at Freddy's and that kind of stuff. Right. Really, all we were doing was thinking about the lore and coming up with our own little ideas of stuff that could happen in that world. And mm -hmm. so 
it's less like here's a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and here's a world where you can have your own theories and you can have play around with it in your mind however you want to do it. It's also important to establish, like, because again, when we created, when we worked on the album, a lot of the of it derives from personal stories, and I think what we realized from the stuff that again, the Living Houston was really well known for, like, let's say, FNAF and. Uh, songs or or anything else that again while it was trendy it was very much like had a lot of unique like you know story behind it when it comes to what the person was behind it so we realized you know part of us doing that and i guess that's why we we wanted to take a risk by making just one song like we made we made my ordinary life based on that risk based yeah. on that idea yeah that our, our song my ordinary life was really the first big if that know, didn't work we might, might have not done the album yeah maybe. yeah really the song my ordinary life was like one of the first really big swings on the channel to do something that was like completely not fandom based and you know that really was the sense was like if people don't respond to this then we're just gonna keep making songs about like Splatoon, yeah, like which Super Mario Odyssey. We always whatever. like doing and everything. Yeah. But I think like we just wanted to see if we're, like it's kind of connecting with the audience. We wanted to make sure that if you guys like, and again, big, part of you being part of this adventure and liking this is the reason we keep going. Like honestly, yeah. I mean, uh, part of it is like people are subscribed to the channel because right. they're looking for something specific, and you know we're capable of making whatever we want on our own. But if people don't want to see a certain thing or like people were like, hey, we don't want that kind of music, then we would just put that somewhere else. Like yeah, we still yeah. probably want to make it, but we would make it for another side project or just not for the Living Tombstone. Yeah. But people were so interested in the Living Tombstone evolving in that direction and having kind of a more personal relationship with the material that uh, after the response to My Ordinary Life, we were for sure like, okay, we've got to write a completely original album that is of stuff that like relates to us personally that other people can relate to personally. Like just making music into the void is like, sure, we can do it, but but that would just not be a waste on our time. It will be a waste on your time if we like, let's say, advertise you a song you guys don't want to see. It's like, yeah, we, I mean, we, we, even if it's for free, like we respect ourselves in your time to do something good. Stuff. Coming on YouTube, I mean, like the, the currency is attention and yeah, we don't yeah, want to yeah. waste anyone's attention. True. Because that's still, you know, yeah, that's still come up. Yeah, it's not needed. Yeah, but you know, in a lot of ways, I feel that the transition to to this album has been seamless, and it just feels very natural because I feel like with a lot of channels, it's always oh, you make fan content and then you go quote unquote legit. But I think what's unique about the Living Tombstone is that you weren't just putting out fan content, which there's nothing wrong with, but you were doing more than that. It you were exploring, as you said, um, story and lore. Uh, and themes through music and through song and through visual um, stuff. And, and so this only makes sense, you know, on some level it was always personal. Um, and this is sort of like the most natural next stage for that. Um, and, but like you said, that can only be sustained and uh, supported on the, uh, if you have a lot of fans there who want to see it, and they clearly do, and they actually had a lot of questions for you guys, too. Totally. I, I actually, there's something I wanted to touch on a little okay. bit before we jumped into Q&A. Sure. Which is like, actually, we have even more stuff kind of coming over the next year, and we wanted to reveal some of that to the people watching before we jumped into their questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, yeah, really cool shit. Yeah. Um, but what's and, coming on, what's coming for the next year, then? Okay, um, so the one of the things that we talked about was, you know, we've got this world that we're building for the characters. Um, a really important element of the characters is the is their ability to kind of be fan fictioned um, in that the sort of in the lore of the Living Tombstone and the characters that belong to the Living Tombstone. Um, these are characters that. As you could see in the Zero One video, the Tombstonas, they bond with different people throughout time and space and dimensions and so on. So it's just as our version of Zero One is a valid version of Zero One, there could be a million different valid versions of Zero One where you're like, this is Zero One when they bonded with this person or that person or when they bonded with me. Um, and people being able to say, like, here's here's what my tombstone would be, and it would be me combined with 
this character and like this is what we look like like that kind of thing mm -hmm. and it really opens the door for people to do with our content what we've spent so long doing with other people's content basically yeah but yeah. by the way chad we put a lot of time and thought into this, this <laughs> we did well but yeah so a much. lot of fun so much um and in fact one of the things that we have coming which some people who've been to our merch store have noticed there was a uh, a comic book which it said, oh, we'll reveal the comic book later on. Well, we're, we'll reveal it right now. Um, let's, uh, let's pull up the, we have the cover for our comic book Chosen. Video? No, it's up there right now. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, it's, it's on the screen. Video. There it is. Uh, the comic book is called Chosen, uh, like our single that comes out right after this panel is done. Mm -hmm. um, here are images of five of the different uh, tomb sonas. You can see the credits for, there, there are uh, five, six illustrators when you count the cover. Uh, we took kind of, make the that theme really driven home of like there are as many different versions of these characters as you can imagine mm -hmm. we had different artists with different art styles each do a short story of one of the five um and so that way you know to show that there are like a million different stylistic ways that you can take each character mm -hmm. um and so we're really excited to reveal that comic book um so if you've already pre-ordered a bundle that comes with a comic book that's, this is the comic book you're getting. It's going to be 20 pages long. It's going to have five stories. Um, and if you haven't, well, now, now you can. Now you yeah. know what it is. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was the other thing I wanted to talk about, as well as um, we are working on, we can't be super detailed about this, no. but we have some other um, video game projects that are in the works. As some of the viewers might know, um, we uh, already you know, provided music uh, and some production and creative stuff to to this game called In Sound Mine, yeah. which the demo is out. Um, get the demo. We recently updated recently. We fixed some stuff with the controller issues. Never mind. Keep yeah, going, yeah. Get going. the demo <laughs> for In Sound Mine for Modus Games, and we create stuff. Definitely get that. Um, but in addition to that, we've been working on a game that is much more related to TLT, like what TLT is as a band. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, I can't say a lot, but there's kind of like some musical based band fighting action. I, I will say no cool. more, but it's very cool. And it's already in active development. So it, we're super excited for people to be able to see stuff from that. Mm -hmm. Expect more teaser material from, from that going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that was all I wanted to reveal to the people. Yeah. There's a lot to chew on. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. yeah. It's in addition to all the music. There's also Just the games. And the comic work and the... Because people in the comments of our recent videos are like, "You guys are playing every week. You guys are playing like crazy like that." We've been stuck with this material for over two years now. So that's getting true. To, uh, all that's a, a lot of this material is stuff that we've been working on for such a long time that it's not like we're making everything week to week. We're just like we just have. It's just been bottled up, and now we're just kind of uncorking it. For you think it's overwhelming to say it all at once and reveal all of this cool stuff at the same time? Oh boy. So I was cool. gonna say, like, I mean, I'm supposed to be the mature moderator over here, but like, I'm also <laughs> secretly like fanboying inside because you're spoiling us with all this great stuff that you're gonna come out with. Um, it, it is interesting though. So, like, can we move on to the Q and A yes. now? Oh, totally, totally. Okay, cool. Uh, because you you guys remarked on how you have had a very like steady quick consistent output and uh we have a question from alex he wants to know how do you make songs so fast oh so our, i guess uh um... our process i feel like is sometimes i mean it's fast when it needs to be sometimes it feels very slow i feel like the shorter a runway we have to finish a song the slower it feels like if we're writing a song in two weeks it feels like it's taking forever I feel like in general, okay. Yeah. I, I say the proper. I mean, you you kind of touched upon it anyway, but but I think the way I say it is that songs take time. Depends on how easy it is to translate it to an idea that people can agree on in the end. Because as there's a lot of situations where, let's say, fandom songs, like let's say Alice's game took a long time. Alice's game, yeah. And it was really hard song to work on because it we needed to understand that people want, will want to see, but a lot of them are people that already know. Who has what well, is going to tell us already, and they know who Esther is, and it's going to be weird for us to make a song that's not even going to match him, and that's why we needed to play with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, why the verse fit him, but the chorus was different because we wanted to illustrate a point about the character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fandom stuff is can be can be a lot harder than the original stuff in that 
we are, you know, it draws a box around the creative and we're as easy as it would be to just like point at a game on a wall and just like write some silly lyrics and like release a song and then people click it just because they're like, oh, I know that game. When we release fandom stuff, we really do want the fans to have a sense of like, oh, they actually care about this. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. this, they've actually spent time and invested in this property emotionally or mentally. Uh, so, you know, it's, this is becoming a very long answer to Alex's question. <laughs> yeah, but, but, okay. but it's about building trust. Yes, yeah. Oh. And our, our, our song process is very simple. Typically, y'all have voice notes a melody. Yeah. Then we talk about a, a, a theme lyrically where it's going to go, uh, and then then we work on the music track. Yav produces it. I write lyrics, uh, sing it, and then it all comes together. By the time we have sort of a structural sense of what the song is, how long it is, where the verses and choruses and stuff are, that's when it goes to the music video people. They often don't even have a finished song they're working off of. Mm -hmm. Like Love and Need was barely finished, but we still knew what we wanted it to be, so. Yeah, yeah, they were they were building the, the video off of the demo, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that's how it goes, you know, it's a kind of machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so it's, it's, you, you, so it's about trust and it's also about, like, what you said earlier, it does take a village. If you oh, have yeah. a team yeah. of people, then that yeah. kind of helps things along, right? We didn't oh. even get, get into the video stuff, which is a big answer in its own right, but mm -hmm. primarily animators, the way we work with them, song can be half finished or something, and and, and it, it differs from person yeah, to person. Yeah, as long as the timing of the yeah. song is finished, the so the track itself doesn't have to be done. And so normally, this really changes we're on such a compressed schedule that they need to work on a, on a half-done track in order to have a video done in time, just because, like, we're trying to get stuff out at such a fast pace these days. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and the video sometimes takes time, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. We I just mean, need to work with that yeah. later. It depends on the situation. Totally. But it's very collaborative. That's, that's yeah. yeah, big answer, but that's basically why it's so complicated. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got another question from Draki1769, which is actually a really good question because we've seen the Zero One Reveal trailer. So we have an idea of what a tombstone is or a tombstone might be, but they want to know, where does the living tombstone come from as the name? As the name, so I mean, yeah. uh, it came because of I was um, I was at a certain period uh, back when I was 19, 20, I was like very much into watching just different kinds of anime. I was watching Black Lagoon by the time I finished it. Black Lagoon? Yeah, the show Black Lagoon yeah. in anime. Uh, I watched the English dub, which was amazing. Uh, but um, so by the time I finished it, I was like, oh, the world is interesting. Uh, and I thought, would, would it be cool to make a rock band that the idea is that by day they would be mercenaries and by night they would be, you know, you know, rock band people. And the band name would be The Living Stone. But at the time I wasn't, you know, I wasn't knowledgeable enough to make it convincing that it would sound like a real band because it was just me with the ideas and everything. Mm -hmm. So in the end, we just and I just ended up, you know, just keeping the name and just creating a channel regardless of the idea. So, you know. It's cool that what, yeah. what is the, cool the for initial me, the living tombstone idea didn't actually pan out, but it was a great name. No, and it's also cool that by the end of now, like as of recently, is that now we have a band. It's yeah. I, all I'm saying is that it, it came back around in a weird, funny way. Uh, totally, you know, I think it's cool. I mean, things happen for a reason. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um. So a bunch of people want to know, uh, who is the guy in drunk? Uh, His name is Drunk Guy. Is this drunk guy? That's I. I promise you, that's the answer. That from the very beginning, his name was just Drunk Guy, and uh, and that's his name, and that's that's who he Sam is. Sam and I talked about this a lot, actually, about this idea if we need to give him more meaning. But in reality, just Drunk Guy. I think it's important to focus on more the message yeah. on the. And what. I think keeping him vague is also just like Drunk is a song that if if you've ever just like either dealt with some kind of alcohol or not, just like some kind of thing that you can't stop doing because it scratches an itch for you and it might be kind of an unhealthy habit and it might derive from like some kind of insecurity or self-esteem, whatever, like that kind of thing. It's drunk is a character that's supposed to relate to a lot of people. So being like, his name is Greg. Here's his backstory in the beginning, in the middle and an end. It, it, it seems limiting and it makes it almost less relatable. Right. Um, and so he's just drunk guy. Yeah. What's important is the message of like what we were trying to sell. I think yeah, it's yeah. what we wanted to focus on anyway. Okay. Um, all right. We've got a question from Meep, and actually, other people ask this too. Yoav, are I, you still a brony? Uh, I think that I am um, because of the fact that it shaped my career and my life 
in such huge ways that I can't like thank the the fandom and and the things that I pursued as positive things in my life like so so greatly. Um, I don't know if there are any fans of um, Jenny Nicholson's channel who are watching this, but I actually I saw you cameo mm-hmm. in her video. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. an amazing There's video. signing autographs like a superstar, <laughs> and I was also singing like some of the songs that I created for one of the brownie song contests that I used to be in called Toast Beard. And what's crazy for me, and, and that's why I think for me, uh, being someone that w- was in this very big period for a very long time of my career, you know, being a brownie and everything, I think like, um, no, it's special. And, and, and looking back at it, I'm like saying, I, I'm, I'm, I, it couldn't have happened in any other way. Like, I think it was perfect that I was part of it. So that's why I still consider myself a brownie for that reason. Um, for those who don't, I see, I'm crazy. actually, I mean, I'm, I'm looking, I've actually got the chat up right here. Uh, <laughs> and I said, so, someone's like, what's a brony? It's... <laughs> Google Brony is Go- just turn on safe search yeah. and give it a Google. Yeah, safe search is important <laughs> because again, um, but that's fandoms for you. It's like yeah, you, you that's, that's what happens. Don't worry, but it's we don't not have to talk about Bronies. It. It's fine. <laughs> Everyone has a crazy, you know, you know. It's always don't worry there's, about. There's crazy it. fans everywhere. Honestly, <laughs> but honestly, it is really nice that you after so long, still hold a special place in your heart for the fandom because I feel like I've heard so many stories in other fandoms where that was no longer the case for, you know, a variety of reasons. I think there are a lot of people who start with fandom stuff and they transition to mainstream and they have this kind of like this sense of shame of where they come from, which is a bummer because I feel like everyone comes from there in some way. Like even if you didn't start making art as part of a fandom, at some age, you were a fan of something in a goofy, geeky way. Mm-hmm. And like, that's embrace it. Everyone, everyone loved something that much at some point. Yeah. But I, I do admit that coming up with this answer about being positive about it took me a long time to come to this point. Because when, because there was a period where a lot of my friends were like brony musicians from that same uh, thing. Like the Jenny Nixon video, by the way, is amazing. And the it's Jenny an hour Nixon long. Video, yeah. It's amazing. It's an hour long, but it leaves us described and gets you up to speed of what, what this is really big about this thing. Because the brony musician community was really huge, but a lot of people decided to just fend off of it because they were saying, well, I don't really watch the show anymore. So again, like, um, they're always you remember, you remember you where you come from. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need some time to think about it, but yeah, I think primarily uh, now I'm very much positive towards yeah. it, given that I put some thought into it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. We have a question from Ashley, one for each of you. Um, why don't we start with her question for Sam? Cool. Do you like singing or rapping more? Uh, I like singing more. Uh, I, th- I, d- you know, it's I like both. I would. I would be very sad if I couldn't do one of them or the other one of them. Mm-hmm. But um, I definitely, I feel like I like singing more just because uh, I feel like rapping for me is almost more of a writing exercise. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's very, di- they're so different. Um, and I, I wouldn't, Pit them against each other, you know, like it's like those memes of like, oh, it's like four different foods, and you got to lose one forever. Like, I would just be really sad if I couldn't rap anymore, or if I couldn't sing anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you do have a great singing voice, but you also do have a pretty singing exactly. flow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ashley's question for Yoav is, what was the first instrument you learned to play? Um, well, I learned how to play guitar. I think that's the first one I actually knew how to play something, and I was playing that for a little bit. Uh, I was trying different instruments like piano and drums for a little bit, but I think guitar was the only one I got like a little bit more stuck on. Mm. But um, I, I, I guess like the instrument that, I mean, obviously now I, I make music on a computer, but I think ever since I picked up on doing that, I was like kind of stopped on, you know, using instruments as much. But uh, yeah, guitar would be the guitar. answer. Mm-hmm. And actually, this is more of a question for me. How did you like discover that? Because as an Asian American, like, I, I feel like I can speak for many when I say that, like, most of our introduction to music is through being forced to play the piano or violin. <laughs> so were you, like, forced to play the guitar or was that organic? No, I was actually completely uh, uh, My family, besides, um, you know, very, uh, well, uh, I don't know, like, like my, my, my family is not that musically inclined. Like, okay. I, I'm one of the very few that... Uh, that decided to pick up on that. And um, when I did, 
Um, you know, it was kind of like I just wanted to, you know, do some private lessons on this and that thing. But I, I guess it was because I was just more on the computers all the time. And when you're on the internet, you just discover so many different facets and you really pick up on the fact that you like music a lot, that you're like, I want to make some too. And that's kind of the internet. You ask the internet, the internet gives give us back. back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm yes. saying? Take it and yeah. give it. I'll say, I'll say too, there's, there's nobody else in my family is particularly musical. I don't know. I don't... It, it's just a thing you picked up on just, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, it happens. Okay. Um, I have a question from Taxidermy Uwu, which I feel like is particularly relevant for us all right now. How do you deal with your creative crisis? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I can go first real I, quick. I, I would, I, I think it's 90% making that noise, by the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the answer. I think like, I mean, for example, I live by myself. So, so what's basically happening is that, uh, um, on one end, as a guy who was already pretty much an introvert, working from home wasn't already a thing that was already, um, just making sure I'm answering the, we're answering the, the, the same question, right? Well, yeah, like a question. creative crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I guess from a, okay, specific creative crisis, um, I think for me, like what Sam mentioned briefly about me using voice memos, is that I, when I work on music at that very time, I'm like, I don't focus on creating a disc, you focus on creating music. And it's very, very different when, like, let's say I would go about, you know, my day and do something, my mind would just be, you know, or with, I guess, in the, in the ADHD sense where it's like, would think different things that create different tensions and stuff, but eventually you come up with an idea that results in a voice memo, which is a melody. And then that solves my creative crisis is where it's like, oh, I don't have an idea. Well, maybe if I go back into ideas, into my idea box and find something, maybe somebody can help me connect to it. So it's like the Einstein thing of like when you're ha when you're creatively frustrated, you just like don't do anything but the thing you're trying to do until the thing occurs to you. Yeah, and then you just keep it all yeah. to the side. And I, 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 that saved me many, many times. Yeah. So there's times where it's still slow if you produce music, but yeah. ideas-wise, that's always saves me. For me, I, I scream and cry and pee. All the time. <laughs> At the same time. At the same time. At the same, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I lose so much fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are both really good things to do as a creator, though. Like, it definitely helps to, like, step away from something if you are sort of coming up against it. And at the same time, it's good to, like, sit in your agony because sometimes you just need to do that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to remind yourself that uh, you got to suffer once in a while. <laughs> exactly, because that's what life is. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to ask this question from Anton. Uh, with the with the condition or the caveat or the like extra note that uh, this can change. So like if you know this is not if, whatever your answer is, it doesn't have to be like in perpetuity. Okay. Okay. What are you most proud of creating? Uh, in general, probably my son. But, <laughs> oh, uh, no, see, yeah, you no. should see this kid. He's enormous. He's Hercules. And he's also your kid. Yeah, and he's yeah. also yeah, it's pretty pretty neat. Um no, um in a TLT sense, um I think definitely it's kind of the creative element of the tombsonas and what they represent and like the whole the whole notion of like putting our own lore together. Mm -hmm. Uh and and if I were to get really, really specific, mm -hmm. I think my favorite song we've made is a song called Long Time Friends, which comes out September 4th with the rest of the album. Oh my God, Long Time Friends is a great song. For me, I think creatively has been, um, well, again, like the whole aspect of being able to tell interesting stories, but also tell them from the perspective of, we went through a lot of stuff in our life, but we managed to compile them as ideas for songs in the album kind of thing. I think that's for me like, the biggest, yeah. the big island to be able to the illustrate fact that, that they're so personal because because it also gives me some catharsis. It's like you, the album. I mean, I'm obviously I super want the album to do well, which is by the way, uh, check the merch store, uh, the link in the description, and then yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Okay, livingtombstone.manheadmerch.com. Yeah. That's our store. Okay, yeah. But even if let's say hypothetically, let's say it doesn't do well, like uh, the catharsis for me is like to be able to tell them outside and and I'm with Sam by to by be able saying, to say we made it. Yeah, and to say we yeah. made the songs and illustrated them so we can feel cathartic, like towards you know this being out. Like long time friends being also my favorite song is very much about that stuff that we managed to compile. So yeah, I'm very very happy about that. I wanted to touch on being able to get our feelings out really quickly. Okay, there's some Hebrew people in the chat. Oh yeah, it's almost 3 a.m. in the morning. 
You guys are up very, very loud. מה קורה איתכם? לכו לישון. למה אתם כאילו פסיכים? You drop this, מלך. Yeah, yeah. The crown. Yeah, no, אני רואה אתכם בצ'אט, אבל אני... אוקיי, כאילו, סופר שמח שאתם מרים, אבל וואו. אוקיי, anyway, sorry. יופי, פיתה. פיתה, פיתה ברית. אוקיי. Um, let's see. We have some more questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, well, this is less of a question, more like shade, I guess. I have a question from Valentino. Why Alistor to make a song about you should have done it on the best overlord in hell, Valentino Lowell? Wow. Good point. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I think I would just, just say... We just wanted to focus on Alistor. I, 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 just think, I would just say, like, awesome point. And we're so we're very owned right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now let's pivot to some questions from live chat. Whoa. Okay. That's your time. Tan wants to know what inspired you to make start making music. That is a great question. Um, for me, I came into music um, sort of accidentally. Um, I did not ever think that I was going to be in like a band band and be making like music music. Um, I, I started uh, with my comedy band, which I still exists, uh, which is called Sam and Bill, um, which actually longtime Tombstone fans may be aware of from like Living Tombstone remixes of a couple of Sam and Bill songs. Uh, but yeah, so like I started as like a comedian and like a kind of a, a comedy TV film writer. Uh, and so my angle into music was not direct at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, the music was a vehicle for comedy and storytelling. And I, I feel like I come into this as a storyteller, not as someone who has a history as a musician. Mm. It's also same for me, not directly at all. I came into music from like a family member, like I mentioned, but for me, it was, uh, A couple of things. Video games definitely inspired me a lot. I think the looping nature of old school video games where they had like a very catchy melody inspired me a lot to think in a similar way because I think that also applies to, you know, you know, music that you want to get people hooked, but also like pay attention to what you're trying to say, like good motives and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. um, another source of inspiration is, uh, you know, in Israel, like where I grew up in and everything, it was more common to sometimes, you know, Again, not everything was e- easily available. You can just buy you know whatever video game you wanted, so it was more e- easy to s- to find a friend who had the game cracked or something uh or uh pirated or anything and it would come with Keegan and there's like a bunch of you know people from the demo scene would just like make uh you know Keegan music for it and everything it would be very interesting kind of like and that you know stuff that I listened to a lot and I came into just specifically the music aspect of it, and I was like, you know you listen to it, stuff you grew up with and everything Yo, is a elite hack so. <laughs> I want to leave the hack store, come okay, on. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I listen to a lot of things that more, mostly on the internet you can find on this. Totally. Stuff, example. So, yeah. No, I feel that. I feel like, you know, for a lot of those cracks, um, the Keegan loading music was actually like the best part of, it was better than the program. Not that we're condoning piracy. No. Uh, every, everyone should uh, download Piracy's Zero One. Bad, but it's wild they make such good music. They, yeah. But I was going to say, everyone should download Zero One, like, legally. Please support, oh, please. <laughs> support the... Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. God. <laughs> I have a family. Um, support your artists if you can, yeah. I have a comment from Jin's Last Brain Cell. They said, my English is not the best, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm from Israel, and I just wanted to tell you that I grew up watching your channel and listening to your songs. You are in Israel's rear diamond. Interesting. I don't know well, what that means. Uh, <laughs> that, that last expression, uh, maybe... You are in Israel's rear diamond. <laughs> weird diamond is interesting expression but uh, thank you um i think like uh, no it's it is awesome i think like um what can i say it's it's i mean listen i i grew like as i mentioned growing up in israel with the stuff that I, was all around me and everything yeah i'm happy it's shaped my music uh, oh but the, there's a there's a lower third um we have like six minutes left but at the mm-hmm. end of that the video for chosen is coming out yes on our channel which mm-hmm. should be linked below. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. So I'm just gonna, I'm, I've got an eye on the clock. Thank you. At the end of this, we're all gonna go over to our channel and, uh, and we'll be What's in the, the premiere together, together with yeah. everyone. Um, I, I see also a couple boosted comments. And I'm gonna I just, say, we should read those. Yes, uh, and I also boo- see from, from Bill of Sam and Bill, you're Hello. here and I love you. I see you in the chat. Squad's all rolled out. That's great. Yeah. 
guys have the best fans. All right. So Luis wants to know how many songs Zero One is going to have. Ten. Ten. Just ten. Yeah. Ten. Great. All right. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Uh, Galex Poju wants to know, do you guys use your previous work as an inspiration? Previous work as inspiration? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very uh, inspired by myself. Okay. I think like for me, it's more like, I, 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 I don't know, I try to develop motifs and stuff like that in music when it comes to composing. So totally, you totally. get inspired by the previous work by trying to understand what to do next kind of thing. So, I, yeah, I, I, see, I see people have boosted some questions. Oh, and, okay, have they? I only saw the one. What else yeah, do we I have? See, is this the is this Yoav's album production beer? No, this is Yoav uh, COVID nineteen beer. It's yeah, it's, it's a different beer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I see someone asking if we'll get to hear any demo tracks. That's a good question. We, we haven't thought about, about it. it, and the demo yeah. versions like would be interesting to listen to. But I guess we will just do it over time. So <laughs> yeah, no, not immediately. No, yeah, because yeah. You said COVID beard. No, COVID beard. I was gonna. Yeah. I thought that was just you like making a choice as you get a little older. I was gonna give you a compliment, but I, it's a it's a sexy beard. I yeah. to love how sexy he looks. No, sh- sh- <laughs> I, uh, no I uh, this came to uh, as an idea because Sam was like asking what would happen if I started to grow a beard. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> that's that's a question I ask where's, sometimes where's to people. The- I'm like, what would happen if you grew a beard? Like, like, yeah. like, <laughs> I think it's it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no. So, so again, it's COVID. So, we decided to test it. So, uh, why not? I will. I think you should keep it after this is all over. Oh, thank all right. you. All right. I'll Shrek, try to keep it. Shrek Five DVD <laughs> wants to know what is your favorite Shrek film? Oh, Shrek Two. Uh, yeah, two, two, right? Two, absolutely two. Two or maybe the last one with Robin Stilskin was good, but I guess that or two. Everyone says that one's so good, and uh, I haven't seen it, so I'll have to. I, I sorry, I'm I sorry. Shrek, is, listen, Shrek is love. Shrek is life, but I haven't seen the <laughs> Rumpel Stilskin one. Uh, how, how are you, my friend? If you haven't seen the last one, because I'm old. We worked on that one together. How <laughs> can you lie to me? I've heard that everything after the second movie is not that great. Uh, uh, you know what? It's okay. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Okay. We don't want to anger the Shrek fandom. Yeah. No. This is seriously. We, they're they're dangerous. Okay. Gibran Ferrer says, "What is your favorite track from Zero One?" We mentioned long-time long-time friends. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Long-time, long-time friends. Long-time friends. Long-time okay. Friends. Cool. You yeah. said. All right. Uh, go like really fast if there's one or two yeah one or two all right yeah. uh here's one because i saw a lot about this particular song hi i'm kenny it's kind of late here in italy i grew up with your music i have this little question for how many time you get into creating my ordinary life and why it as dark meaning lyrics okay so um uh first of all thank you kenny uh thank you to anyone who's here like super late in in a, a- Another country. That's oh, especially wild. in Europe, yeah. Yeah, absolutely wild. Um, uh, shout out to Italy. Big fan of pasta, as anyone who follows my Twitter so can see. Um, <laughs> so uh, My Ordinary Life is a song that um, sort of follows a hypothetical of, you know, we were just thinking a lot about, like, what it means to be an artist and what it means to be a successful artist and how some artists get really successful and they begin to, like, kind of completely lose touch with the things that made them kind of a human being in the first place. Yeah. Um, I actually, total side note plug, uh, I've been listening to a podcast called You're Wrong About with my wife, and one of the hosts, Sarah Marshall, talks about um, extreme wealth being kind of a temporary cure for the human condition is something that she mentioned, which I was like, that's an amazing phrase. But it, the song is kind of like that. The idea is like you get so successful that everyone's just kind of telling you what you want to hear, and you start losing the experience of like actually being a person because experiencing life is something that requires flaws and requires people saying no to you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so the song's kind of about that. Okay. Um, you have, do you have anything to add left. to that? About got a minute re- left. Is there another, is there anything else? One last thing. I love you, Chad. Love you, Chad. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, everyone. I'm I'm a big fan of turkey, but I recently (laughs) became a vegan. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I feel so healthy. All right. Well, uh, everyone, remember to go, after this is done, remember to go over to the Living Tombstone channel and watch Chosen and make sure to download Zero One when it comes out. Um, 
I've been listening to the three songs that have come out on repeat. It sounds great. Everyone who's been uh, popping into the Metaverse videos, thank you for being a part of this. I know times are crazy right now, but, um, you know, we really appreciate you all coming in. And thanks to Read Pop for sponsoring this. And thanks, Living Tombstone. Thanks to Sam and Yoav. Bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.